Hello! Today we are diving into the world of Retrofit, which is a powerful and popular HTTP client for Android. So if you're looking to make API calls in your Android apps, you're in the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of how to set it up in your project and to making your first requests. So whether you're a beginner or are looking to refresh your skills, stick around and let's get started. Okay, so to get started, we're going to use a very simple basic Android project that I created. It's uh, what you get when you do a brand new um, empty activity. Normally, this you get this main activity class and it has a single composable. Um, and uh, I renamed it to be wizard data. Normally, normally, I think it's called greeting. So here, this, just, this composable just has a single text composable. Uh, that displays if this the value in this data variable is not null um, So if we go over to our we're getting this data from our um, Harry Potter data property in our view model. So if we check out our view model here The default value is no data. So if we take a look at what the app currently displays you see that it just says no data um, but we're going to update this by making calls to our um, API. And we're gonna be using the Wizard World API that has uh, just some pretty neat Harry Potter data. So um, yeah, so here is the basic project and let's get to it. Let's take a look at the dependencies that we're gonna use for this project. Uh, since we are using view models, and live data, I've added the corresponding Jetpack Compose uh, dependencies for each of those here. Additionally, here's the retrofit dependency. And as of this recording, the latest version is 2.9.0. We're also going to need a JSON library. So we're using um, Moshi uh, because it's really great to work with for Kotlin projects. So I've added um, the corresponding dependencies for Moshi Kotlin and the corresponding converter for uh, Retrofit for Moshi. Lastly, I'm adding this OKHTTP OK interceptor dependency, which will be very useful for when building out our data models. One very important step that we absolutely cannot forget to do is to give our app internet permissions. So if we don't do this, our app will crash. So we're going to open up our manifest file and then right below the manifest tag, we're going to say use this permissions and give it internet permissions. And we're also going to say access network state. And then we're all set to start configuring our app. So we're gonna be using this wizard world API which I think it's pretty neat. It has some uh, awesome Harry Potter universe data. And if we click on this Swagger link, it has great documentation. We're gonna be using the feedback, houses, and wizards endpoints for this project, uh, which are gonna help us go over the most common or some of the most common HTTP request types. And so we're gonna get started making a simple get request to this uh, houses endpoint. So the first thing we'll do is define an interface here. So we're gonna create a new Kotlin class file of type interface. And this is going to be um, an API service interface to define all of the methods that we're gonna be calling uh, for the different endpoints in our API. So we're gonna just call this wizard world API service and we'll create one uh, suspend function to get the houses and we're going to need to annotate this with the get annotation from retrofit in parentheses, we're going to need to put the endpoint that we want to hit. So if we look at our documentation here, it tells you that you need to uh, pass in the houses endpoint. And so we can just pass that here in parentheses. 
and looking at our documentation to see what it's going to return. It looks like it returns a, an array or a list of different items. We're just gonna call these house items. So I'm gonna go back to Android Studio and say that it returns a list of house. And this is complaining because we haven't really created, we haven't yet created a house type. So let's do that next. I can see here that each house item or each item in this list of um, houses, most of the properties, the, the, the type of um, value that they hold are uh, is a string. So that's gonna be pretty easy to, to type out. However, uh, sometimes typing out a lot of JSON data and converting into a data class can be a bit um, tedious. So you can always use this plugin for different um, JetBrains IDEs, which will uh, convert JSON to a Kotlin class. So you basically just paste it into the into the plugin, and it'll it'll just generate all of the data classes for you. So this will save a lot of time when defining data models. But let's go over to our Android Studio and we're gonna create a new data class, Kotlin class data class, and we're gonna call it house. And I already have this uh, written, so I'm just gonna paste it in here. Yeah, so we can see that each house uh, also contains um, a list of house heads or the heads of the house and each one has an ID, a first name, a last name and each house also has uh, some traits which have an ID and a name. So we can uh, query those using our uh, Wizard, Wo Wizard World API service. Okay, so for our next step, we're gonna need to create a retrofit client. So we're gonna need to create a new Kotlin file of type object. We're gonna call it retrofit client. And here we're going to create a constant, private uh, const val to store our base URL. And if we look at our API documentation, the base is this part here right from the .com uh, and before. So we can just copy that and paste that here into our retrofit client. We don't need this slash, this forward slash, because we are uh, in our API service, we're already passing uh, adding a forward slash for each endpoint. So we don't need two forward slashes. And we're also going to define a logging interceptor. That's gonna be of type HTTP logging interceptor. We create an instance of that, set level to body. And what that is gonna do is going to log responses from our API uh, to our console. So if we ever make a mistake, we can see the response, uh, the full response in our log cat, which will help us debug and troubleshoot and figure out what we did wrong. So now we'll create a, um, okay, HTTP client. And we'll use the builder. And we're gonna add the logging interceptor and build. Now we can create our Moshi object here. Moshi, we'll use the Moshi builder and we can add a Kotlin JSON adapter factory. and call build. And lastly, we can create our wizard world API service of type wizard world API service by 
lazy and then use our retrofit builder to add all the different properties so we can add the base URL we can add our converter factory which is a Moshi converter factory creates with the Moshi object we created earlier we can add um, the OKHttp OK client that we defined above and we can call build and lastly we can call create and we pass it the class that we want to create so it's going to be the wizard world api service class at java and great so now we're ready to begin making api calls okay so now here in our view model we can begin making api calls and updating our harry potter data so Let's create a private suspend function that's going to get houses from our API. And it's going to, not going to return anything. It's going to update the value of our Harry Potter data property. And it's going to use our retrofit client. And we're going to call the wizard world API service get houses and we're going to convert this over to a string because this is a mutable live data of type string and we are going to call this inside of an init block just to keep it simple uh, but we need to call this asynchronously so we're going to launch a view model scope and we'll call our get houses function inside of it so now we can run the app. Great. So this is the response from our API. And you can see here we have um, the Gryffindor house with the house colors and all of the different information. Uh, and if we take a look at our log cat, this sort of um, yellow output that you see here that's coming from our OK HTTP client that we defined uh, in our retrofit retrofit client. This is coming from our um, HTTP logging interceptor and this comes in very useful because if we had made a mistake in defining our data models or anything in our um, uh, especially in our data models, you can see, you'll, you'll at least be able to see the full response. So we, you can see that it was, it was successful. And um, the endpoints uh, that we hit, so houses. And then if we look down here, you see the actual full response. So let's say that in, uh, if we look over we go over to our house data model. If we had actually defined this instead of a string, we call this an int. This would error out, but we will see here in our uh, log cat, we'll actually see um, that the response was, uh, the request was successful, but let's go back here to the log cat. So, here we can see that the um, JSON uh, had a JSON data exception because it expected an integer, but it found um, found a string. But here's the actual data that we get from our from our um, from our API. So we can see that ID is actually um, a string here, and then we can make that change accordingly. So it's very useful for debugging and troubleshooting uh, if you have make any mistakes um, while creating your data models. Okay, so to explore how to uh, some of the other features of Retrofit, we're going to make a uh, call to this wizard wizard's endpoint. And uh, if we hit this try it out button, which is pretty neat, you can hit execute. And you can see in this example curl request that it takes um, a header for this accept 
plain text and um, you just pass this uh, capital H flag and um, this particular API doesn't really need for us to pass an API key, but we're going to explore how to use headers in the same way that you would use use them if you needed to pass an API key to make a request. So back here in our wizard world service, we're just going to make another get request. This time it's going to be to the wizards endpoint. Got to make sure we add the forward slash. And this is also going to be a suspend function to get wizards. And I believe it's also going to return a list of, we're going to call this, we're going to create a new type called wizard, but we're going to need to pass some headers here. And we'll just import that class. And let's take a look here in our API. So we can basically copy this string of accept text plane, and we'll paste it here inside of our headers annotation. So that was an example of how to use the headers annotation, and you can use it just to pass uh, a string. Uh, you can also pass a comma separated, like multiple strings separated by a comma. But let's say you wanted to pass multiple properties uh, to the header, including an API key. You can also use this headers map or header map annotation, and uh, which takes a map of, and you define the types here. And this is how I used it in this other project. Uh, I created a function called headers map that returned a map of string. And you can define um, your map with the different uh, key value pairs. So here, I'm passing the key and then um, this uh, rapid host um, property and uh, you just map it to the different values that you need for, for that particular API. Now back here in our Swagger documentation, we can see that this particular wizard's endpoint takes two parameters, one for first name and one for last name. And if we look down here in our schema we can open up um, the details and we can see that string can be straight uh, for first name and last name both of these are strings that can be nullable so here in our get wizards function we're going to define two query parameters and we're going to call them the same thing that we see in our documentation so this is first name and last name, uh, and I believe these are capitalized. So paste that there. And this is gonna be first name of type string, which can be nullable, and we'll set it to null as the default value. And we'll set one for the last name. Great, so now we need to create this wizard uh, data type. So we'll create a new Kotlin class file. Data class, we'll call it wizard. And I'll just paste in our wizard data class. So we can see that each wizard has a list of wizard elixirs. Um, and then it also has an ID, first name and last name. So we can check back here in our API service. Looks like we're all set. So then we can go back to our view model and we can define a new private suspend function, of get wizards. Just call it get wizard since it's a wizards endpoint. We're also gonna update our Harry Potter data property with the result from our uh, retrofit client, wizard worlds API service, get wizards to string. Um, 
And this particular function, we're going to say that it also takes a first name type string and a last name of type string. And we can make these also nullable. or optional um, and then we'll say first name last name so that way we can query a specific wizard but um, so let's comment out this function and what we can call get wizard and if we make this call Let's see what we get without passing a first and last name. Great, so we can see that we get a list of wizards. Um, and this, each wizard has an elixir. So this one, um, Mrs. Scour, has an all-purpose magical mess remover. So it seems to be wizards that have invented something. Uh, so not all wizards. So now let's try looking for... Um, Let's see who can we search for here so we can search here for Fleamont Potter so if we call the Potter and rerun our app That'll give us just the information from Fleamont Potter, and it looks like they invented this Sleek Easy's hair potion. Great. So this is how you can do an API request, um, it, with get request with headers and queries. Okay, so lastly, we want to go ahead and make a post request, which is another very common type of HTTP requests you will be making. Uh, so we're gonna use this feedback endpoint. And if we look here at the documentation, it looks like it takes no parameters. The request body is here. And if we go ahead and hit this try it out and execute button, we can also see that it takes two headers. So we're gonna pass those as well to our request. Uh, and if we look at the response, the response body is empty so we're going to uh, want access to the headers to make sure that we're actually successfully making this um, this response so let's head on over to Android studio and create our method so here in our uh, API service we're going to create a post annotation and we're going to pass uh, we're going to be hitting the feedback endpoint. We're going to create a suspend function that we're going to call submit feedback. And inside our parentheses, we're going to say that the body of the function, body of the request needs to take a feedback object of type feedback. And it's going to um, return a response type void because the response body is going to be empty but we want access to the headers just to make sure that we're uh, successfully making the, the request um, and then here we're also gonna need to pass some headers if we go back to our documentation we can copy here the, the two different headers that we need to pass And then now we can create this feedback data class. Okay, so we're gonna create a new Kotlin class file, data class of type feedback. And I know this needs a feedback type, which is a string, feedback, the actual feedback that we wanna to submit to them 
which is optional. And then an entity ID, which is also a, an optional string. All right, great. So now let's head over to our view model and then we can create a new function here, private suspend function. That's also gonna be similar to the ones above, but here we're going to submit feedback and it's going to take a feedback parameter of type feedback. Um, and we're going to update our um, Harry Potter data value by calling our retrofit client wizard world API service. We're going to submit the feedback with this feedback object and we're going to take the response and convert it to a string. So now let's um, comment that out. So here, let's go ahead and create a private val suggestion that is going to be a new feedback object. Um, and then let's say, so for the feedback type, we'll just say suggestion. And this type I'm just getting directly from the API. So if we look here on the API documentation, uh, we can see that the, I think it's down here. Yeah, send feedback command um, has these four different types of feedback. So I'm choosing the, the suggestion and then you have the, you can pass a string for the actual feedback you want to submit and then the a UUID for um, the entity ID. So let's get back to Android Studio. And so for feedback type is suggestion, the feedback that I'm going to pass. Um, I noticed that this uh, wizard's endpoint, it, it doesn't return every wizard. So if you give it the, f the first name and last name of Harry Potter, it's not going to um, give you information about Harry Potter. It seems like it only has um, wizards who created some sort of elixir or some sort of, uh, yeah, I think it's only elixirs, uh, which is why it has an elixir property. I thought that was funny. So I would say um, as part of the feedback, I'm going to suggest um, perhaps rename the wizards endpoint to uh, something like um, wizard Enters, just because I feel like that could be a little more intuitive, but um, regardless, I think it's it's great. Uh, so then um, I think the other thing we need to pass is entity ID. So entity ID, we're going to uh, create a new UID, random UID string, and then here we can call submit feedback with our suggestion. And then if we run the app, so as you remember, uh, this response doesn't have a body, but here we can see that the, uh, the response code was 200, which means it was successful or successfully sent um, with the actual, here's the URL of the uh, endpoint and the message, okay, so we know that it was successful. Well, there you have it. Those are the basics of how to use Retrofit on Android. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about what we covered today, or if you have ideas of what other topics we could explore next. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.